Hello friends, this is Dave Hurwitz, Executive Editor at ClassicsToday.com, here to talk about the most beautiful melodies in the world, your picks. And the two of them that I'm going to do with this chat are both Russian. Let's see, let's see what we have, shall we? Oh, this is so much fun. Oh, this one comes from Hanach. That's such a great name, Chanach. Chanach, in case you're, you're wondering who Chanach was. That was the son of Cain and the father of Methuselah. So Chanach has an illustrious pedigree. And he writes, as a second shot, because this was his second attempt to nominate a tune, I would choose the great theme of the first movement of Rachmaninoff's symphonic dances. The discourse between the saxophone and orchestra is stunning. It's achingly beautiful and tons at the heart. It's indescribable. Well, we're going to describe it anyway, because nothing is indescribable. Yes, the this is actually, I think, an, a wonderful, wonderful tune to nominate for one of the most beautiful melodies in the world. I mean, Rachmaninoff wrote lots of them, and and you have suggested quite a few from the second and third piano concertos and of course the great adagio of the second symphony i mean you've been been quite generous with your nomination of rachmaninoff and with good reason because boy could that man write tunes but i agree with hanach that this one this one is particularly special and it's quite different from rachmaninoff's other tunes uh you know the more famous ones anyway because i think this tune has a certain certain Ah, what's the word? Uh, an innocence and a fragility. It's not one of those heavy-handed, heavy-handed, pardon me, gushing, romantic, you know, dark, sultry, oozing with passion type themes. This one is wistful. It's nostalgic. It has a certain fragility, almost an innocence, that's it's really rather new in Rachmaninoff's language, even in this, which was which was his last work. It was his last major work. I mean, F Rachmaninoff, after he wrote the symphonic dances, said that he'd fired off his last shot and was surprised at how well the whole thing turned out because it really is a masterpiece. Uh, it's a major, major masterpiece. I've played it, and it's incredibly fun and amazingly beautiful. And I think that, that this tune really does represent almost a, a new language that he was embarking on at the point that he he stopped composition entirely and, and died actually rather shortly thereafter. So I want to play you this tune and Hanach mentions the fact that it's given to the saxophone which is unusual in itself but what makes the tune even more special is the way that it first appears in in broken phrases in the saxophone surrounded by sort of pauses that are filled in by orchestral figuration in the other wind section. There are no strings here. And then when the violins finally take it up, underpinned by the piano of all instruments, which we, of course, Rachmaninoff was quite, quite successful at writing for, when he, the piano takes it over and the strings do it, the pauses are shortened greatly or eliminated entirely. And so that is the only time that we hear the complete melody. And that makes an effortless climax without the need to have heavy surging orchestration of the kind that we find more typically in Rachmaninoff's second and third piano concertos, or even in the Adagio of the Second Symphony, which is mostly a clarinet melody, as th those of you who mentioned it already know. So let's listen, let's listen to this absolutely exquisite theme. It's, it's an incredible tune. Uh, this performance of the Symphonic Dances is with the Detroit Symphony Orchestra under Leonard Slatkin on Naxos, because I have permission to play excerpts. And what a gorgeous performance this is. So here you go, the big tune for the first movement of Rachmaninoff's Symphonic Dances, brought to you by Hanoch.
Amazing, isn't it? Un unforgettably beautiful. Poignant. That's the word. Poignant. If I had to think of music that was poignant, that would be poignancy in sound. Absolutely fantastic. Now, let us look at the second Russian excerpt, which I'm extremely excited about as well. I think this was also a magnificent and interesting choice. Not the usual thing. It's from Philip Cass, and he writes, I would like to nominate a selection that I haven't seen elsewhere, one of incomparable beauty and exquisite delicateness, I guess delicacy, and ethos. It is the Swan Princess theme from the Three Wonders of Rimsky-Korsakov's opera, Tale of Tsar Sultan. It is paradigmatic of a fantastical canon of Rimsky-Korsakov, filled with magic, splendor, pageantry, color, and harkens back to the medieval ages. In an opera whose libretto is overshadowed by gorgeous music, so typical of the Russian Romantic era, this is a moment in the story that I love to return to for its glorious ending. I think Philip that Philip that was a great choice. First of all, I think Rimsky Korsakov is horrendously underrated, largely because he didn't work in major forms, you know, such as symphonies after the first three earlier works. And he wrote mostly operas, and they're mostly fairy tale operas, and they're in Russian, and nobody has any respect for them. But as Philip points out, they contain amazing music. I mean, the suites are gorgeous. I mean, the orchestration, of course, is is non pari. I mean, Rimsky Korsakov was an amazing, amazing master of the orchestra. And the Tsar Sultan Suite is fascinating because, first of all, that's the opera that has the flight of the bumblebee in it, and it isn't in the suite. I mean, God knows why he left it out. The suite contains three large numbers, which are all intermezzos or entreacts between the various scenes of the opera. And they are so magnificent and fully realized in and of themselves that you almost don't need the opera. You want, It's almost like the Leonora Overture number no. three that Beethoven originally you know, wrote as an overture to Fidelio that he sort of dropped it separately because it was so big and exciting that it sort of blew away the rest of the opera. Well, these orchestral works really, really have a very successful life of their own. But who plays Rimsky-Korsakov suites anymore? I mean, it's 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 a tragedy. You don't see them programmed in concert, and and they are beautiful. And the Tsar Sultan Suite, which really we only know from recordings, it's it's good twenty minutes long and three juicy movements, and the Three Wonders can contains the music of the Swan Princess, who is a bird who turns into a princess, and they get married, and it's a fairy tale. But it is an absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous moment, and performed by Gerard Schwartz of the Seattle Symphony, also on Nexus. Here it is.
it's a stunner, isn't it? And I, I totally agree with Philip. It is one of the great melodies in the history of the universe. Absolutely one of the world's most beautiful melodies. Rimsky-Korsakov also wrote quite a few of them. And he gets very, very little credit for them. A bunch of you have mentioned the the uh, some tunes from Scheherazade, which are also gorgeous, absolutely stunning. But really, really, there is so much Rimsky-Korsakov that we ought to be listening to and that we aren't. And so I really, really appreciate this opportunity, Philip, to keep on listening, which we're all going to do in our next chat about the world's most beautiful melodies. Thank you so much. Please keep your suggestions coming. I do look at all of them. As I said, I, I know I can't pick all of them and I can't play all of them, but uh, there are quite a few more coming. I've already lined them up, and so we'll be we'll be getting to them hopefully in reasonably short order, and then this will become an occasional series because, like I said, if I did all of your selections, I would be doing nothing else, and we probably would be talking about every great piece of music ever written too. So we have to be we have to be selective. There's value in scarcity, but these were two wonderful, wonderful selections from the Russian repertoire, and it was a. a joy for me to have this opportunity to present them to you. So thank you to Hanoch and Philip, and I'll see you next time. Take care. <laughs>